English conversation classes seem easy. You just talk to someone and help them improve their language, right? Well, not really. There are some huge mistakes you could be making without even realizing. I'm Will from Enchanted ESL and I've been teaching English conversation for years. This video is about the surprising mistakes that many teachers make and that I used to make before I realized what I was doing. And to be honest, sometimes I still do. We're at the fourth installment in my series about English conversation. The previous ones were about creating the right atmosphere, choosing good topics and correction technique. There are plenty of things you can get wrong in all of them, especially correcting, but I won't be covering those in this video. So for a more detailed look, check out those other videos. I've put the correction technique up there and down in the description. The first mistake is one we can all be guilty of talking too much. Let's be clear, a conversation class involves a dialogue. For the student, it's both speaking and listening to what you, the teacher, has to say. So you should talk throughout the lesson, but not as much as you might think. See, speaking is easy for you. You're able to express yourself concisely and clearly with very few words in not much time. That is not the same for your students. They'll probably take a lot longer and use many more words in expressing their ideas. A good conversation has a balance of ideas expressed, not how much time each person talks. So your students should be talking a lot more than you in terms of time. I'd say about three quarters of the lesson. Saying that with more advanced students who can express themselves concisely and quickly, it's closer to 50-50. Even so, they should be speaking more than you. And if they're shy, then you should be encouraging them to speak more rather than taking up the time with your speech. And that leads to mistake number two, which is finishing your students' sentences. This is very hard not to do because listening to your students struggle and falter in a sentence is frustrating. You want to get that idea out so the conversation can express and you, you just want to jump in and help them out. And I admit I'm guilty of this sometimes even now and it's especially difficult when your student looks to you to help them. You must resist. The time and the effort and the frustration your student has to put in to finish that sentence does disrupt the conversation, but it's vital for them to improve. Of course you can guide them and give them key vocabulary where necessary. Just make sure it's them that finishes the sentence, not you. Number three is talking too fast. This one is fairly obvious. If you speak to your students like you speak to your friends at home, then they're gonna struggle to keep up. Some will let you know directly that they want you to slow down, but others will just try to listen and respond, but not really know what you're saying. Also, when you set a fast pace, your students might feel the need to go really quickly as well, and that can be overwhelming. However, mistake number four is talking too slowly. This is more likely to happen without you realizing. If you speak very slowly and clearly and using basic language, your students will understand you, but beware of dumbing it down too much. If you don't challenge your students with a slightly higher pace and new language, then they're not gonna improve as fast. There's a sweet spot where you speak slow enough for them to understand, but they have to be focused. Not too fast that it's overwhelming, not too slow that it's too easy. And after a while getting to know your students, you will find that sweet spot. The next mistake is not hitting the like button on this video. Not really, but I would appreciate it. Likes are a great way of telling YouTube to spread this video to more amazing teachers like you. Thanks. Number five is promoting your opinion. It's inevitable through a conversation that things are gonna arise that you disagree about. And debating these things is healthy. Getting students to express and justify their opinions uses a lot of great language, but it's not a competition. And although I sometimes find this hard to accept, your opinion does not matter. The aim of a conversation class for the student is to improve their English, not learn about what you think on different issues. That's not to say you can't express your opinion at all. In fact, you should, but you don't have to win the argument or convince them to change their mind, even if their opinions are a bit dodgy. On to number six, and that is using the same prompts every time. Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer over and over again. This is a real problem in conversation classes. It seems like a good idea to go on the internet, print out a bunch of questions and rattle them off in the class. You're getting students speaking a lot in their answers and elaborating and developing their ideas, which is good. But if you do it all session, every session, it'll soon become tedious for both you and your students. It's really important to switch things up 
Try new activities and prompts. Challenge students with different language than just giving their opinion all the time. Negotiation, inquiry, speculation, imagination. There are so many different things you can do. In later videos in this series, I'll be going over a whole number of prompts and activities that provoke different types of conversation. I also have several articles for different ability levels over on my website, EnchantedESL.com. Once the videos are ready, they'll be up there and down in the description where you'll also find all of those articles. And the final mistake is sticking to the script, relying too heavily on your prompts at the expense of organically arising conversation. Depending on your students and the particular circumstances of each session, you might not need any prompts at all. Something may have happened in your student's life that they really want to talk about, or the very first prompt might open up a longer and broader discussion about the general theme. This is the perfect situation because it's natural conversation and your student is pushing it. They want to talk about that. Oh, but you did all that work to prepare all of those fantastic prompts and you're not going to use them. Oh well, this new strand that your student wants to go down is much better. Plus, you can always use those prompts in a later session. The worst thing to do is cut off that organic conversation and force the prompts instead. The only time when you may consider forcing the prompts over a naturally arising conversation is when that conversation is a bit wild and irrelevant. This happens quite a lot with kids. Sometimes their ideas are so off the wall and they're not going in the right direction that helps them. It can be fun, but at times you need to control it. Conversation classes with children are different to with adults. So check out the next video in this series which goes over conversation classes with kids. It is right there. But for now, I've been Will from Enchanted ESL wishing you all the joy and success in your teaching. See ya.